Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ham Radio Dude. You know, I recognize something and what that is, well, maybe I'm over engineering things for somebody who's just getting started in amateur radio. Now, don't get me wrong, the Dude Spike is awesome and I enjoyed making this piece. I enjoyed using 10 spikes and kind of playing with everything to make it work. It works great and there's a use for it, I'm certain. But today, I want to show you how for $11 you can make your own ground spike or tent spike that's going to allow you to hold multiple ham radio antennas well well i guess we'll see so uh thanks for checking out the channel again guys and let's get started let's build this guy right here the ultimate 11 dollar antenna mount probably also pretty important to mention that there's a lot of people out there who know how to do this and hey i recognize that this is something that has been done probably many many times in the past but that's cool because I think the key is, is introducing these concepts and these theories to a newer generation of amateur radio operators, whether it's an older generation or a younger generation, new radio operators, uh, and maybe even some people who just didn't know that at the time. It's a very good resource because it's so inexpensive. I mean, $11, and this is what you do. This L bracket here was $10 at a ham fest, okay? So that includes the L bracket, and it includes the back plate, as well as the hardware for mounting, and the SO239, uh, three ace 24 adapter everything here is perfect and the only other thing we really needed is a 10 spike now initially i like this 10 spike because it's a lot larger but it's going to come down to a point here and because it has this lip i guess i could sand off the lip but this is supposed to be easy right and so we have this 10 inch 10 spike from ace hardware or harbor fright or walmart they're about a buck and all you got to do is slide it in here and once it's slid in there's a lip up top and the top portion is going to hit that lip. I actually think that'll work in our favor though. And all we're going to do is take our two 7 16 inch wrenches here and just tighten these things down. Uh, so I'll go diagonal when I tighten these. Here, 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 and then here. I'll be right back. Now that's it right there. And then we're going to get really nifty in just a moment. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can't make a... Uh, multi-band vertical antenna uh you guys see a trend here <laughs> all right i found a new way to do a close-up shot here i got the camera pointing at me and i'm just carrying the tripod but here we are in the ground right and uh, i will tell you that this is very solid so uh, i'll be right back with that antenna call it what it is man but you have with this Wolf River coil antenna, which is uh, 17 feet, you'd have 20, 15, 17, 12, 10, 11, six meters. Um, and it's probably too long at this point for two meters, but we can find out later. We have this fully extended and seems like it's doing an all right job. But you know what, maybe we need to I don't know, first probably check continuity to make sure that this thing even... There's like a chrome plating on this thing, right? And we need to make sure that continuity actually exists on it before we go too crazy. And so I think the format is the same uh, as we've seen before. The multimeter to check continuity, and, and the, really the only thing we're going to need to check at this point is... I want to make sure that the tent spike has continuity to the actual L bracket. And it does, so that's great because that means, uh, well, A, we could put radio wires right on these four uh, little bolts and nuts. Uh, that's good. So the next thing I am going to do real quick is I'm going to put my own radials on here. And for that, I'm just going to use the power pole radials that I've already made. Let me show you. Yeah, let's just kind of go at this here. And my power pole connector is a 5 ace to power pole connector and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put in my 3 ace so 239 adapter through everything and you're going to notice right here that this little white washer well this little white washer is yes i'm stabbing myself uh, this little white washer is preventing the antenna portion to be conductive meaning it's separating the antenna from the the radials and uh well let's just do it now, one more thing that I probably should mention, though, is, yes, we tested continuity from here to here, and everything was cool, meaning the 10 spike has continuity and this L bracket has continuity, but we don't want continuity to the outer shield 
meeting the inner shield, right? So we don't want the antenna to have continuity as the radials have continuity. They're two separate things. The antenna, the radials, okay? When they combine, uh, it, it doesn't work what, right. No continuity, that's a good thing. All right, so we're gonna tighten this down. And after we tighten it down, we're gonna check it one more time. Uh, let me get the right tools for the job. Should be a ninth, no, I was gonna say a ninth sixteenth, but that's not right. Just as I was saying, a ninth sixteenth, there we go. <laughs> that's it. Um, well, no, I guess you could even go further if you wanted to. And, you know, you, well, here, let me just show you. If you wanted to take it a step further, you could put that uh, hamstick commander top on here. Wow, look at this. This is kind of cool. Um, hey, about this plate, uh, a lot of people made some really good suggestions on what I could do to strengthen it so the multi-band vertical has a little bit more support. And I actually fabricated the parts, or I have them in fabrication. There it is. I mean... I want to make a note though, in a prior episode, I couldn't get all four of these to properly tune and the impedance values got thrown off when the fourth one went on. Even though these are about five and a half inch spaced, I think they're still too close. Ideally, they should go off further. So we're only going to do two antennas right now. But look at that, that's, wow, that's kind of cool. Well, let's go test it, right? Until the part comes in for the Hamstick Commander, the base plate that I got fabricated, this would be weak, but I have a quarter wave 20 and then I have a hamstick 40, so I should get them both. And again, you see that there's some separation there and it's bending out because that plate's not strong enough. I got that taken care of. Uh, thanks for all your suggestions. It, it, they did really good for the last video. This will break eventually. So uh, I'm not going to do this, but I thought it would be cool to kind of mention it. <laughs> you know, I guess the only thing is, is when you're done, I wouldn't recommend grabbing your ground spike by the antenna because you could maybe you know cause some issue with the threads here but you can just pull right here and it pulls right out or I suppose if you were, wanted to get real technical you could um, put a carabiner on here or drill a hole here for a carabiner yeah why not we have a couple minutes why don't we drill a hole for a carabiner right here After I drilled that hole, I went ahead and I got some sandpaper and I smoothed it down a little bit so I don't cut myself or get any of these metal shards inside of my finger. And then I just took a carabiner here and clipped it into place. Voila. I just wanted to point out one thing here and I did this intentionally. So you can see the coax here and the coax comes down straight down and there's a bend when it's hitting the ground. You know, those bends aren't really good. So you could get an L-shaped bracket here, just get yourself an adapter, or you could actually get one of the L-connectors as well. Uh, but you don't really want that bend. It's not good for the coax. Could really affect the values of what you're seeing for standing wave ratio, as well as your impedance values. But other than that, I did put a coil on this for a little bit of time, and uh, the coil about, I don't know, six inches long, it did fine. I mean, with the coil on, it didn't add so much weight where there was a problem. I wouldn't be hesitant to use it, which would give you 40 meters and then maybe even 60 as well, depending on what coil you're using, of course. Uh, but the key is here, we made this ground spike, and then if we unscrew this guy here, to disconnect this, it's as simple. You take the power pull wire, you pull it out. You don't even have to be gentle. It's out, and then you take this here and you pull it up. Good to go. Hey, we just build another, another ground spike antenna mount solution, but I think that this will be the last one we're going to test it out quite a bit over the next few months because I really do like this. A couple of things that I would mention real quick is this carabiner is great, but I probably want to go to the store and get some shorter bolts. Regardless, if all you have is $11 for a ground spike, you get your tent stake, you get this little L bracket that comes with the connector at a ham fest, $11, you're good to go. 
probably could think of a million different ways at home to build it. Let us know in the comments below so that anybody who comes here could see and can continue to build these things and get into amateur radio relatively inexpensively if that's what they need. Until next time, I'm Ham Radio Dude 73.